Hello, this is Paul here, and I'm going to show how I make a multi-threaded fastener type things for threading. Because I know some people have done threads and stuff in their tutorials, and it's, you know, it's, there's like three or four <laughs> different ones that are actually pretty good I've seen already. But I'm going to do one where you have threading with more than one start to it. So what I'm going to do is start out with a circle. I'm going to change it to 3, which will give me a 3-sided triangle. And because it's equilateral, that gives me corners that are 60 degrees each. So, start out with that. I'm going to turn off the handles here to get in the way, and I'm going to go in edit mode. Alright. So, first of all, I'm going to rotate this. Center here, RZ and 30, just to get it at an angle. And this will give me a 60 degree point. And actually, take that, duplicate it. <laughs> no, we're real. I'm going to orientate it. So I want the threads orientated vertically. Now the reason I copied this side is this is actually going to be scaled by... Is it? I'm not going to do that yet because... Yeah, I know why. <laughs> Never mind, I don't need that. And I don't really need this edge. So that can go. So I have this, which will give you the angle for the threading. And... To determine the spacing here, I actually have to do the point here. I tend to keep these the same because I know they'll work. So control V to bevel that, and you have to hit V for vertex bevel. And that will give the end angle. So this is like a thread section. Now to space the offset between the thread sections, I do this. I duplicate that. Just move it off to the side a bit. And I scaled it by its medium point, scale it by 0.5. And now I can do this. Oop. Have a vertex active, that's why I do it like that. Go to vertex, set that to active. And actually, I want the top one active. And what I'm going to do is duplicate it. I'm going to turn on auto weld. Snap it to there like that, and this one I'm just gonna move it. And now they're automatically welded, but because I took them from a duplicate of that, I just scaled halfway. It's now at the right size to do its thing here, so that's good. <laughs> so now I have that, that's the basis of a thread, and let's select it like so. I'm gonna scale it down a bit. So, and move it off to side X. And you can figure out your diameter of a circle and stuff for your threads. I'm not doing it scientifically at this point, although it's very easy to adapt it. You see, I started out and I got a, the basis of a. Well, it's a standard angle, but I'm not worried about the pitch. You can always adjust that. But now I got a standard thread kind of thing here. And what we want to do is, I'm going to do three starts. So if that is a starting point, but for each piece you put on here is a start of a thread. And I'm going to do, like I said, threads with multiple starts. So I'm going to set my axis back to three cruiser. And I'm sure it's in the center, but I'm going to double check. And <laughs> all right. We're good there, and I'm going to do is Shift E to duplicate, but I'm going to hit R and Z while it's still in the duplication. And I know 360 divided by 3 is 120, so do that, and then Shift R to repeat. And now I have three that are spaced the way I want for the screw modifier, so we are good there. 
sure it's twin scale. Now what we want to do is go to our dimensions and we notice the height of the thread is the Z dimension here. So I'm going to hover over this. It's hard to see in my theme but you hover over it should highlight ever so slightly and hit control copy. So I'm copying from the Z on the dimensions here. And now I am going to add a modifier and then I am going to go screw which is like most of the other things. And right here, offset, I'm going to hit paste. And our rotation is going to be 120, because that's one third. And now you can see they all line up. And the steps, hold on, I'm going to turn on the wires. Steps is how many we have here. So right now it's currently 16. But I'm going to make a circle with 24, so I don't want 16 steps. I want 8, so I'm going to change the steps here to 8. Just to be sure I change both. And we can even do that. So now there are 8 steps on the side. And 2 or 3 iterations. 3 is fine for now. And that will give me threads that go all the way around. Actually, I think I'll go four iterations. Like so, and, and you can see I have three starts, with three sets of threads, which is not like a single thread, it's more than one helix to it. Just so you did, if you weren't paying attention, but get the idea. It's not like your standard single helix thread, it's, but some things like bottle caps, and certain adjustment fittings, they actually have more than one thread to it, so it's a handy little trick to know. So you apply it, and now it's one thing. Except in edit mode, if I hit L, it's still not quite one thing. So I'm going to do is uh, remove the doubles. <clears throat> so now it is one mesh. Because I know this is 8 times 3 for the steps, my circle that I'm going to add is going to be a 24 circle. So I'm going to add a circle, set the count to 24 this time, and move it up. Move it even to the top. Five. And do this, I usually just do snapping. You can change that to closest for now. Strain it even to the top, and I just move it up by a small amount. So like 0.1. Do the same thing on the bottom. Actually, I'm probably jumping the gun here, so I'm not going to worry about that. Because what I want to do is cut this threading out too. Well, I could do is scale these circles to match the outside of the. So I'll do that. We'll keep them around even though they jump the gun on this tip. Seven. And select one here. And scale to the cursor. I'm going to change this back to active because I have that one selected right on the perimeter. Scale that, shift Z. There, now I know the circles are scaled to the outer perimeter. <laughs> Neat little tricks like that makes modeling so much faster. But what I wanted to do is here, I believe, I have a cursor where I want to cut it, and there is another spot. So we'll do that. And I'll move the circles to position. So, sure, I am in front ortho, which I am. I'm going knife cut. Take a knife there, constrain a knife, and cut all the way through. It may not be obvious, but I set the Z to cut all the way through. And same here. Cut all the way through. And there. And I'm going to do the same right here. Knife cut. So, 
Yeah, because it'll give me an even edge to do the my thing here. Oop. What I forgot to do is Yeah, I want that selected. <laughs> it's funny I just undoed, but I got back to the selection point, so and what I wanted to do was split that edge that I had just cut. And I hadn't done it really. I think there's an option under edge cut to have it split out from the start. So. Never mind that. Selecting these bits. These bits. Because we're just going to chuck those and delete them. So X, X there. Now I can position my circles. <whistles> Pardon me. <laughs> weld yet. So that's, yeah, I should turn off auto weld. Like so, and. So now I have 12 here, 12 there, and there's some edges that may need to be collapsed here, but around the main part should be fine. Now let's look at this vertex mode. So we have an edge here that comes up short and funny, and yeah, I'm going to collapse some of these two vertex. So I'm going to turn it on to auto weld again and let's clean that up real quick. My cut didn't go quite as clean as it's open here. No, no, that's. So right, that's why I have the circle there to uh, put those on. It's not quite as perfect. I think I did this with my other run with a little bit of variation. Uh, probably a measure in a length or something. So that's why this one isn't as clean as it was before. But I know how to work around it. So. Okay, one more here. Let's see. So that's how you clean that up. I think that is it. Alright. So now I'm going to just select these two. I have the F2 add on enabled. So that makes, uh, Filling in these faces a lot faster. So that's how I bridge them. So I just hit F and I can select this edge here. And with F2, it will fill in the whole rim around here if I just keep hitting F. So that's a very handy add on. I usually have that turned on. Yep, I had one spot that didn't merge right here. So I will fix it. And one here. Okay. And the bottom will be the same, so I'm going to pause the recording. Do the bottom. Okay, back again from doing the bottom. 
So now we have this threading kind of thing with three different starts. And usually at this point I like to add a little bit of a inset or a relief or whatever you call it. So I'm going to use extrude these like that. E point, scale by Z a bit. And I'm just going to make this an open ended object, so I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to turn that off. Extrude, but I'm not going to move it, and I'm going to scale on the Z plane. So, and fill in, and Loop there, Troll loop there, and I'm going to bevel these a bit. Something simple like that. And because I notice the shading is weird, I'm going to select all and hit Control N, which ensures my normals are in the right direction. <laughs> You're probably saying something about that if you know your way around Blender. You're like, why is he doing this? Yeah. And then while I have it all selected, I will check for doubles. And you're having any. So this should be good. And now I can do smooth preview. Well, before I do that, I'm going to add another control loop for uh, tension loops. And there's one on the top here. There's three separate threads, so each one needs its own. So three on top of those threads. The bottom. So so now each thread has its own loop there, and there's also a spot between the threads, and I usually like to do here. There should be three of them because there's three gaps. And there it is. Now this should have three separate threads doing their own little thing. Alrighty. So now go object mode. And I'm going to add a subdivision surface. Hit that up by two and off the wires. And you can see this has three threaded starts on the inside. Uh, the thread is a 60 degree, or the angle of it is. Then it's truncated off and there you go. Now you can uh, make threaded fasteners or whatever and you know it starts you uh, similar technique but for like uh, two you do 180 and uh, or you do 90 or whatever but 3 was 120 so you can see how that works and it's not that hard <laughs> if you know your way around blender I'd say this is intermediate but it's a cool little trick and there you go that should be it